Apple loves to use interactive animations on their website. One of their favorites is fancy text scrolling over background videos. Here's an example on the Vision Pro page and another example from the AirPods Max page. Today, we're going to recreate this animation in Next.js using Framer Motion. You can grab the starter code in the description. With that, let's jump in. All right, here's the project starter code. So I just have a very basic hero section here at the top, a bunch of placeholder sections, which is the title, and these are all in a separate section component, which I have here on the left, and then just another placeholder section here at the bottom. Let's start by animating the opacity of these titles as we scroll. So here in this custom section component, first going to set up a ref for the container. So content ref is use ref initially will be null. Let's import use ref. I will attach this ref to this div here where the content lives. So ref is content ref. Now we use the use scroll hook from fair motion for scroll tracking. So we'll extract out the scroll y progress property from the hook use scroll. And I'll pass in here the target is the content ref that we just attached. And then I also pass in the offset. So here we'll say that 0% progress should be when the start of this container is at the end of the viewport. And 100% will be when the start of this container is at the start of the viewport or at the top. Now let's take this scroll y progress value from 0 to 1 and let's map it to opacity values. So below this, I'll create a variable called content opacity. I'll use transform here. I'll pass in scroll y progress, which is what we're mapping. I'll then pass these two additional arrays in. So this first array is a set of, we can think of keyframes for scroll y progress that I'm interested in. So in this case, scroll y progress from zero to one. So I've also picked out some intermediate values. And then the second array is what I want these progress values to map to for this content opacity. So you can see here, for example, what I've said is for the first 10% of scrolling, let's leave the opacity here at zero. Then for the next 10%, we'll ramp up to opacity one. We'll set one for quite a bit of time before ramping back down to zero. Now let's use this content opacity for the styles. So on this div, I'll add a style tag and I'll set opacity to be content opacity. This is complaining because content opacity is a motion value from fair motion. So I need to make this div a motion div. All right, let's try this out. So on the right, let me scroll down. And as this container here at the bottom starts coming into play, you can see that the text fades in. It stays on screen for a while. And then as we get to the top, it starts to fade out again. And the same is true for these remaining sections below. Now let's move on to setting up the background video for each of these sections. So we'll go into the page component. And you'll notice here that these custom sections we have set up, we've grouped them into another section here. So at the top of this group section, I'll add a div. And this div, we're going to set to position sticky, height of screen, and inset of zero. Then inside this div, I'll add the video tag, make this self-closing. And then on this video tag, I'll give it properties autoplay, muted, loop, plays in line, give it class names of H, full, and object cover. And for the source, for now, I'm just going to hard code one of the videos in this project. So section 1.mp4. And so now we have the video here on the right. As I scroll, you can see it becomes sticky and it stays there as all of these custom sections scroll past. Now to make the text a little bit easier to read, let's add a darkening overlay on top of this video. So as a sibling to this video tag, let's make another div, also self-closing. And on this div, I'll give it styles of absolute, inset zero, BG black, and let's set the opacity to 70%. Now this text is a little bit difficult to read, so let's change that to white. So I'm gonna go here into the content and I'll set this to text of white. So now similar to the opacity of the text, let's also animate the opacity of this overlay in the back. So back in the section component, just like we set up this transform for the content opacity, let's set up a transform for BG opacity. Use transform. Again, this will be based on scroll Y progress. And this time we'll use a slightly different set of mappings, still having scroll Y progress from zero to one, but now only caring about mappings at 20 and 80% of scroll Y progress. Okay, now we need a way to broadcast this BG opacity value back up to the page to apply to the overlay. So I'm going to set up a state variable in the page that will store this value. So we'll call it BG opacity, set BG opacity, and use state initial value of 0.7, import use state. And now on this div, instead of directly applying this opacity value here, 
I'll apply it through our style tag. Opacity is the feature opacity variable. Nothing changes here on the right, but now we can pass this setter down into the section components and call it based on the values of BG opacity. So first on the section, I'm going to go into the props here. I'm going to add set BG opacity, which will be a function that takes a number, doesn't return anything. I'll make sure to grab it here in this props. And then back in the page component, let's make sure to add the set BG opacity function. So we do it for this one, and now I'll just copy it for the other ones as well. Okay, now that we have access to the setter, let's actually call it. So below this BG opacity, what I'm going to do is say BG opacity on change the current value of the property, and I'll call set BG opacity to be the value. So this is the change listener on the BG opacity variable, and every time it changes, it'll broadcast this up and call set BG opacity. Okay, now let's try this. So I scroll, we have this dark overlay here. As I keep scrolling, it starts to brighten up here until the text is showing. As the text fades out, the overlay darkens again until next section, and this repeats for the following sections as well. Now let's swap the video that's playing as we get to each section. So first on the page, let's set up a state variable to track which video is playing. So video, set video, view state, and to start with, it will be the section one, the MP4 file. Now let's go into the video tag and swap the source to use the state variable. Now I'm also going to set a key here, which will just be the video URL. Now on the section, we're going to require that each section knows what video it corresponds to. So I'll set it up as a prop to the section. So it will just be the URL string. And I'm also just going to go ahead and add the set video function that we're going to need here as well. And now for broadcasting out when we want this video to become the active video, we'll go down here. We'll use the scroll Y progress change listener. And when the value of this variable is between zero and one, this means that this section is currently on the screen. So that means this is when we need to set the video to be the video. And this is airing out because we need to explicitly Make sure we get access to these in the constructor video and set video. And now as we create these sections, we need to pass in these new properties. So we'll need to pass set video in and we'll also need to tell it what the video for each of these sections are. So this one's going to be section one dot MP4 slash. And I've done this for the other sections as well. Now let's try this out. So I'm going to scroll. We have this first section. We have the videos playing. The first section scrolls past and let's see as we get to the second section there we go the video changes keep scrolling third sections and the fourth sections videos now one thing that you'll notice is as we switch videos there's a bit of a flash that happens and this is because the videos swap in let's try to mitigate that now one simple thing we can do is on this section tag that includes all the other sections we'll just add a bg black of 70 this aligns with what the overlay is set to. So now if I scroll, it should at least not fade to white, but it will fade to this 70% black color instead. So it already starts to look a little bit better, but even now there's still a bit of flashing that happens and you can really notice it if you scroll very quickly. To make this even better, we're gonna add some animations as the video switch. So on this video tag, first thing I'm gonna do is make this a motion video component and import frame or motion. Then I'm going to set up initial animate and exit properties. So initial will be opacity of zero. So just a simple fade in this will be. Animate will be opacity of one. And exit will be opacity of zero. To make sure these exit animations actually occur, we need to surround this in an animate presence. And on this animate presence, I'm going to add a mode of pop layout. So this will have the videos crossfade as they switch. Okay, let's try this out. So I'm going to scroll to the next section. Okay, and that video switching now looks a lot better. With that, we finished creating this animation. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. And on screen now is another video for you to check out. And I'll see you in the next video.